It's a race around the world with an eye to saving the planet. This is Earth Race, a boat that's super tough on waves, but easy on the environment. It's built to dive through walls of water on the open ocean. The boat slams really, really frequently. You're just sitting there with going bang, bang, with the whole boat coming right out of the water. It's the skipper's second attempt at a world record. His first ended in a deadly crash. I think we're gonna get back. To succeed where they failed before, the crew must go back for more, enduring a torturous trip of 24,000 nautical miles. People say the carbon fiber is harder and tougher than human beings, but we'll soon find out. Valencia, on Spain's Mediterranean coast. In Segunto, an industrial port just outside Valencia, Pete Bethune is preparing for his second stab at the speed record for going round the world by powerboat. My name's Pete Bethune, and I'm skipper of the coolest boat in the world called Earth Race. To set a new record, he needs a boat that's fast and tough. Uh, the boat has been built to attempt the round the world speed record for a power boat and at the moment we're just doing a refit on it to put in new engines and gearboxes and sort out all the scars on it. It's more than just a race for the record. It's a mission with a message. Earth Race is fast and friendly to the environment. It's entirely powered by biodiesel, fuel made from recycled vegetable oil. After my time in the oil industry, I had a growing unease about our dependence on fossil fuels. And then in 2002, I did an MBA and I wrote a project on alternative fuels for road transport. And through that, I became a real convert to biodiesel. Pete's also buying carbon credits to account for the fuel Earth Race burns. I don't consider myself an adventurer. I, I'm a conservationist and I'm doing this to promote uh, renewable fuels and to promote the idea that people can lead exciting lives and do wonderful things, but they can be better on the environment at the same time, but they need to think a little bit more about what they do. That, that's the reason I, I'm doing this. I really believe we do make a difference. And, and so does everyone here. I've got 15 people here working for free at the moment, and they believe in Earth Race and they believe in the message we've got. My name is Adam Carlson. I'm from Sweden, and I'm going to be one of the crew members on board the Earth Race during the record attempt. Uh, yes, some kind of madness is, is, is within Pete, of course, but uh, he, has, he has a big devotion to his dream, and that's what I'm on this project for. It's a privilege to share that dream with him. Is that angle right? Pete will need a devoted crew to succeed where so many have failed before. The dream of sailing around the globe dates back nearly 500 years. The great explorer Magellan died trying. The current record for powered circumnavigation stands at 74 days, 20 hours, 58 minutes. The odds are stacked against Pete, or anyone, breaking it. Since 98, there's been five attempts, no one's finished, two have sunk, and one got smashed up in the canal. You don't go around the globe without having some dramas along the way. You need a little bit of luck as well, and if we get a bit of luck, and we, we deliver like we can, then we can get the record, but man, no way is it guaranteed. The trip is a tough one, and Earth Race is built to take a beating. I'll just give you a quick tour. So on the bow here, this is actually solid through to about here, and the idea being if we took a smack in the race, we can come on and cut off a section, and the boat could still do a reasonable speed. As we come back, the next section is also a sealed storage container, and effectively the boat could be cut off here and it's not going to sink. Heaven forbid that it ever, ever comes to that. But a key safety thing on this, when you're going through the, the Mediterranean, across the Atlantic Pacific, there are containers and, and logs floating around in the water, and there is a chance that you hit one of those at high speed. Fingers crossed. I used to think it would be like a hot knife through butter, and that was kind of how the designers explained it to me. It's nothing like it. Like, it is a brutal experience in big seas. Earth Race is a wave-piercing trimaran. Its bow is barely buoyant, 
so instead of surfing over top of waves, its narrow nose needles through them. The design lets Earth Race maintain speeds up to 30 knots, no matter what the ocean throws at it. We've had about five meters of water on top of the windshield as we went through some, some big 12 meter waves, and it is so violent, and it's, it's like a bombardment of your senses. This is no pleasure cruise. Earth Race is built for speed and endurance, not comfort. It's almost like this, the surge of energy coming through the boat and a certain amount of that wave's energy transfers through you. And uh, it's, man, it's intimidating. When you start submarining through waves, it's really, really freaks you out the first couple of times. Kind of used to it now, but you get new people in the boat and uh, you, you see the looks on their face. <laughs> Pete is the only crewman returning from the first record attempt. A few, like George Robson, are helping Pete get ready, but they refuse to brave the bruising ride inside Earth Race. There's two months of pure misery. The boat slams really, really frequently. You're just sitting there with going bang, bang, like the whole boat coming right out of the water. The problem I have is that um, my kidneys shut down after two days. As in, if not, not drinking, you can't stomach anything. You can't eat, you can't drink. There's no way of cleaning yourself. There's no way of making yourself smell better. It is misery. <laughs> you couldn't pay me to go on that race, so. Earth race is fast and tough, but it's not very nimble. It's especially clumsy at slow speeds, and Pete still has trouble docking it. Any collision could sink Earth Race's chances of setting a new record. A collision like the deadly crash between Earth Race and a Guatemalan fishing boat during Pete's last attempt at the record. Senor, senor, okay. Gato, escucha. It was very early in the morning, maybe one o'clock, something like that, and. I was, I was asleep at the time, and suddenly there's this almighty crash and scraping, and I knew straight away we'd hit another boat. Senor, senor. Walked out the back, and it was just a scene out of a horror movie. This boat basically demolished three fishermen in the water. Just a, just a horror scene. It's in this area somewhere. And swam over to where the third fisherman had been. He'd been there a minute earlier in the water. I could, you know, I saw the guy. Swam over and he disappeared. And no, no. I think the, I think he's dead. Just the skipper's worst nightmare. Um, you know, you're responsible for a boat that has, you know, run over another boat, and and in the end, the fisherman was never found and presumably drowned. And nightmare. After eight days, Guatemalan officials cleared Earth Race of any responsibility in the crash. And my crew and I would like to express our deep sorrow of that one, Sam. I would like to express that I lament a lot what happened. I'm sorry. And I lament. With the blessing of the fisherman's family, Pete resumed the race. But the damage was done. Earth Race's hull was cracked and taking on water. Heaps of water in it now. I think we've got to go back. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Pete's invested everything he has to make one final run for the record. I'm married with two kids, and my wife Sharon, she is amazing. Like She's been fantastically supportive on this, and she sacrificed a fair amount. I mean, I've been away from home for a year and a half now, with only maybe three months of that time back in New Zealand. We've chucked everything we've got just to get the boat in the water. The boat cost $2.5 million. Pete's mortgaged his house and taken on crippling debts, and that only covers half the cost. Sponsors are picking up the rest of the tab. Expectations are high, and Pete's feeling the pressure. Not, not scared physically or, or that kind of thing, but I'm scared we're going to let people down by not getting the record or by not delivering like we should through the record attempt. And the, same on that one. the engineers have learned some lessons from the last record attempt. 
Vibration from the engines and pounding waves is Earth Race's biggest enemy. It can tear apart engine mounts and delaminate the carbon fiber hull. The crew is replacing both 540 horsepower engines for this attempt at the record. Pretty similar to the last engines, but we've already done about 70,000 miles. Those engines have done a lot of hours, and uh, to get a record, mate, you can't do it on engines that have done 5,000 hours. They're hoping a new mounting system will let them run the engines at full power without excess vibration. It will be pretty crazy if our engine mounting system works really well. We'll be able to run at speeds and we'll be able to handle the boat with real ferocity, which in the past I think they were a little apprehensive about really hitting them hard. Three months later, Earth Race looks shipshape. It's been painted with a Maori design, reflecting Pete's native New Zealand. But that's just aesthetics. The real test of her seaworthiness comes now. It's a very nerve-wracking time when you're putting the boat in the water. Like, if something's going to go wrong, it's when you first lift it or when it first goes in the water. Today's sea trial will be the first test of the new engines on water. It's the last chance to discover any major problems before the record attempt begins. Uh, this is what we call the helm, so it's where you drive Earth Race from. We modeled it around a racing car. Most of the electronics are reasonably standard, so we run a GPS radar. We do have a, an infrared night vision system, a military one, which is uh, fantastic for, for viewing things at night. Autopilot, engine control, so relatively standard. Smooth sailing so far. But the placid seas off Valencia are nothing like the walls of water they'll face in the open ocean. Something's gone wrong. Yeah, don't know. Yeah. That's it? it? Jumped out of gear. Really? It jumped out of gear. It's a gear pressure. Pete's hoping it was just a fluke. He'd better be right. There's no time for unexpected repairs. Uh, ground crew, ground crew, earth race, earth race over. Um, but I think they were kind of mucking around with the throttles, like putting them forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards. So and whether it whether it jumped out of gear or someone pressed something they didn't realise. What we'll do is we'll, we'll just run another sea trial or two over the next couple of days, and if it doesn't come back, we, um, we won't do anything about it. It looks like Pete's right. The problem doesn't come up again. And it's a good thing. Earth Race leaves Spain in just two days. The day before the record attempt begins, the last of the necessary supplies are brought aboard. As the record attempt comes into focus, fear and doubt set in. I think this worries me a little bit is the heat. I'm, I'm not used to the heat. It's going to be, I've never really been outside Europe, so, so now I'm going around the world some way. So I don't know how hot it's gonna be in the Caribbean, stuff like that, so that. It's hard work, mate. It's, it's really hard work. You think, oh, you're taking a boat around the globe, how hard is that? But it grinds you down. And especially the Indian Ocean last time was just brutal, and it ground us all down. I'm looking forward to getting it out of the way, but I sure ain't looking forward to getting back at sea. But there's no time to dwell on their worries. It's time to fuel up. It's all shipped around the world in these, about 175, maybe 180 of these totes. 
Here's the magic stuff. You know you can drink a liter of this and not die. Let me have a smell, the good stuff. <laughs> you just drop a couple of hot potatoes in there. The biodiesel powering Earth Race is provided free by a company in Portugal. They make it from recycled restaurant grease. The task of getting it to eight different countries, just in time for Earth Race's arrival, is turning into a logistical nightmare. We can't have it um, go too early because the stuff will actually go off. This has been sitting here a month in the sun. That's, you know, that's at its limit. The heat is at its limit. We really need to have it in port a couple of weeks before um, we get there. Even once the fuel is in port, gassing up Earth Race is a lot trickier than just pulling up to a pump. We'll either, at the port, we'll either get the, uh, a contractor to suck it all out, 12 or 15 of these at every stop, and suck it into a lorry, and then the lorry will actually come and just blow it straight into the boat. That would suit me better, but there's a cost, so this is the cheap way of doing it. Pete hopes going round the world in record time will prove you don't have to sacrifice performance to be environmentally friendly. He's gone to some extreme measures to catch the attention of the press. He went for liposuction. He's skinny anyway, but they, they took a couple of hundred mil out of him. And uh, he went home with his ingredients and brewed, I think, four or five gallons, uh, or, or liters, maybe one gallon of biodiesel. He used it to start the engines first day on the boat. His own fat. For this record attempt, Pete's courting the media at every pit stop. This boat here is called Earth Race. And right now, it's attempting to set a new world record for a power boat to circumnavigate the globe running 100% renewable biodiesel fuel and a net zero carbon footprint. It is important for countries like Egypt to start adopting biofuels as part of their transport energy mix. But it's also crucial for government to ensure the feedstocks that get used in making these are sustainable. So if you'd like to come down and check out the coolest boat in the world or show your support for the cause, please come down and see us. I look forward to seeing you there. If you want to follow progress, check out www earthrace.net. What we're doing is just uh, making a little news report uh, for each stop when we get there. My name's Rob Drew and I'm the ca cameraman on board Earth Race. Just making a uh, little documentary and um, blogs all the way around the world. But spreading the word is spreading peep thin. When I first started this a few years ago, I envisaged about eight months six months to raise some money, six months to build the boat, and then six months to do the attempt. Mm. And it's now been five years. With Pete at the press conference, the job of getting the boat ready is left to the rest of the crew. There's a whole pile of crap over there you can dig through. Shit, well. Where's the tape, you know? There are more people doing media than there are people doing engineering. Let me put it to you that way. What a mess, eh? Chaos. It kind of revolves around me a little bit, and and if you you're fronting up for media, media always want the skipper. The the schools always want the skipper, and it's. It kind of sometimes it's like unfair on the crew who do as much work on this as I do. People always want to have me involved in it, whatever they're doing, you know. And it's kind of meant I'm so tied to the project that I can't just bugger off and, and leave the team to it. And it does feel like a bit of a millstone that I'm dragging around right now. And you know, I, I really wish I had just nailed the record last time, finished the tour and taken it, taken the boat back to New Zealand and got back with my family, you know. But We've had so many people and companies and supporters get us here that I, there's also this obligation that you can't just walk away from it. You, you've got to finish what you set out to do. Uh, and so I'm, I'm kind of saying at this stage, I'm, I'm committed to Earth Race through till Christmas and hopefully about Christmas I can have that boat back in New Zealand and get back with my family. And hopefully I'm still happily married at, at that time in Ireland. Pete's dedicated five years to Earth Race and he's asking his crew to put their lives on hold for more than two months, leaving everything behind. 
Hi, my name's Mark Russell. I'm the boat engineer on Earth Race for the world record attempt. It's my beautiful one-year-old daughter, Leah, and my beautiful wife, Jennifer. Pretty we'll come to pink. say goodbye to Daddy for a couple of months, eh? Mark leaves a growing family. His wife, Jennifer, just found out she's pregnant again. So we'll be just waiting for Daddy to come back, won't we? And hopefully break a world record. You'll be walking and talking when I next see you, won't you? <laughs> yeah. 65 more of them. Before the race even begins, Earth Race has money problems. The race is expected to cost $200,000. Much of that is spent shipping fuel, paying import duties on the fuel, and flying the ground crew around the globe from pit stop to pit stop. We're in so tight right now. Tight for money, that is. If we had money, I'd be loose. One day before launch, they only have a third of that money in place. We're concentrating on selling race legs. It's our only way now where we take a guest crew on, uh, train them, do some induction, and take their hard-earned cash from them. Selling spots on the boat to thrill seekers should supply the rest of the cash they need. But they still don't have the guest crew spot sold for the first leg of the race. An Earth race leaves tomorrow. It's race day. Everything is ready to go, with only minutes until the race begins. This is it, mate. I'll give it this. I'll do my best on this, and if I get the record, fantastic. And if I don't, I've done my best. Oh, hi. Thank you. Thank you. All, right. All the best. See you. Thank you. We hope these guys will make it to demonstrate that, you know, we can... We can do, be innovative and uh, be environmentally friendly. Yeah, I think they'll do it. I think they're very well prepared this time. And uh, the last information we got uh, is that the boat is a little bit faster now. They have uh, obtained two, three knots uh, better speed, and that uh, helps on the long trip. So we are, we are convinced that they will make it. Some late night salesmanship by the crew pays off. They've sold the guest crew spot for the first leg of the race just last night. My name is Lisa Topley, and um, why I'm here, good question. I mean, managed to persuade me that it was a good thing to do last night. My thoughts right now, I am absolutely petrified. Kind of nervous, kind of nervous, but um, it is good to be heading off. It's been a long journey getting here, and I think we've got to deliver now. It's time to stand up and do what we said to me. One by one, the crew says their farewells. Yeah, look who's going on the boat. Roger. We're just starting the official start of the race. So he's going to um, head out into the port. He's going to take off full blast. And when he passes the floating pontoon, the official time starts. Big day has come, and the moment itself has come. Earth Race's crew won't see Spain again for two months, if they see Spain again at all. One nautical mile down, nearly 24,000 left to go. Our food has been left in the fridge. <laughs> Excellent. It's the Earth Race Weight Loss Program. We're a little bit light on food, but we've got enough to have to rack a little bit. No bog roll either. No toilet roll, did you say? It looks like one roll. Amazing to be underway. I was really worried leading up to leaving about the, the possibility of not succeeding and, and um, I feel much better now that we're underway. I'd like to see the big run and sweep. And 
uh, everyone feels pretty happy. The sea's nice, really nice. It will be three days before guest crew member Lisa can get off at their first pit stop, the Azores. From there, it's another week to cross the Atlantic, first to Puerto Rico, then on to Panama. We're about an hour away from Panama, and we've got a dock all sorted there. And I'm a little bit worried about Panama. We've had no news on the email from ground crew. So I'm wagering that our canal crossing has not been arranged and we won't be going through today. The ground crew is waiting for Earth Race in Panama, trying to cut through red tape and get the boat through the canal. Yeah, it's no, been monumental, you. man. It's like no sleep. Yeah, Panama's wild. The Panama Canal is the crossroads of the shipping world, the link between the Atlantic and Pacific. It's a bottleneck that can keep ships in a holding pattern for weeks. Until they get permission to transit the canal, Earth Race isn't going anywhere. Extremely frustrating. It just feels, feels like we're going on a flashy cruise around the Caribbean right now, you know? And the clock is still ticking on the record attempt. There's only 62 days to travel another 19,000 nautical miles. All right, keep pushing for this evening, that's, that's preferred. We are definitely booked on tomorrow's crossing and they may sneak us through tonight. So if we get through tomorrow, it means it will have cost us a full two days here, which is about 1,200 miles, which hurts. But... Suddenly, Earth Race has bigger problems than crossing the canal. Mark sliced his foot on a sharp bit of metal opening a huge gash. Earth Race needs Mark. As ship engineer, he's crucial in carrying out repairs at sea. But right now, it's Mark who needs repair. Dozens of stitches. Basically, he's, he's severed his toe, a cut about probably 50, 60 millimeters long, and it goes almost right through. So he's been rushed off to hospital, um, no news, I guess it'll take an hour or so before we hear anything back, but doesn't look good for him doing, at the very least, I think he'll skip the next leg, but... It's just, it doesn't feel like a race, eh? The delay at the canal gives Mark time to get stitched up. He refuses to quit Earth Race. Yeah, right. Action shot, go on, you know, you've got to suffer for your heart. Next morning, they get the call they've been waiting for. Earth Race is allowed to jump the queue and enters the first of the canal's locks. It takes 12 hours to travel from Atlantic to Pacific. We made it through the Panama Canal, okay. We actually lost about two and a half days waiting to get through. And when you consider some boats have been there for six weeks, we actually did all right, but it still hurts to go losing that time. Had a beautiful run up the Pacific coast here. Seen tons of marine life, whales and dolphins and turtles and stuff. And we're now just about half an hour from Manzanillo in Mexico and just got to refuel, do an inspection on the hull, make sure it's all sweet and then on our way up to San Diego. San Diego, California. Earth Race has traveled nearly 8,000 nautical miles. The ground crew is already waiting for Earth Race's arrival in port. If there are repairs to be made before crossing the Pacific, they need to be done here. We'll be here for a pit stop of maybe four to eight hours. The engineer would like to be here a lot longer than that and do a full service of the engines. Pete's in his race mode, though, so I suspect there'll be a negotiation between how long, how long they're here. There they are. They'll need every spare minute on this stop. They need to clear U.S. Customs, 
refuel, and service the engines before turning west and heading to Hawaii, 2,500 nautical miles away. Every time Earth Race ties up in a new country, there's a pile of paperwork to be completed. Even customs officials who greet new vessels every day have never seen anything quite like Earth Race. Mark's been looking forward to this stop. He lives in Ireland, but his parents live in California. The pit stop offers a rare chance for a reunion. I am so proud of him. I think this is the most exciting thing anybody in our family has ever done. There she is, <laughs> enjoying some food. Mark hasn't had a doctor look at the gash in his foot since it was stitched up in Panama a week ago. Oh, wow. It's not going to stop me doing the race, that's for sure. No, We're about to offload 15 tons of fuel in under an hour. Do you need, like, pliers? Uh, or bolt cutters? Do you know, happen to have them? No, but I'm sure we can find bolt cutters. Unloading the fuel takes longer than expected. Nearly two hours. Oh, it's flying now, man. I think we'll be here another couple of hours still. Tino's working on the engines. We've got a potential problem with it. Both engines are smoking a bit, but there's no blowback from the engine. So it could be the turbos, could be something else. Not quite sure on that. So Is it really tight or can you use it with the blue handle driver? Adrian finally gets the fuel towed close enough to the boat and puts the pump to work. It's off right now and it's still coming out. But there's still more problems. They've already spent four hours on this pit stop. Uh, we were getting little bits of air, bump, air into our uh, fuel lines, so we had to take the pickups off and reseal them just to stop the air coming in. Mark still hasn't seen a doctor. There's no time. As the ship engineer, he has to help Tino with the engines. Despite the pain and the engine trouble, Mark's mind is on the family he left behind to run for the record. Um, Jen's 12 weeks pregnant now. We weren't sure how far along she was. <laughs> Little Leah had her first baby steps days ago. Finally, after five hours, things start looking up. The biodiesel is flowing into Earth Race. Mark finally receives medical attention. The only person they could find to make a free house call at a wharf in the dark is a veterinarian. So I volunteered to change his bandage when he got back here. He can lick my hand when we're done. <laughs> the, the little toe doesn't look quite right. It never used to sit at that angle. <laughs> the vet will have to do. A sweltering cabin crammed with four other people is prime breeding grounds for bacteria. They must ensure against infection. Uh, I need about 10 more minutes in there. They've been in San Diego nearly six hours, and they're still not ready to go. The ship's crew is anxious to shove off, but the ground crew keeps bargaining for more time to make repairs and adjustments. Yeah. I've been telling him two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours yeah. now. <laughs> I'm tricking him at 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. Inside. This is oh. hilarious. <laughs> it's taken longer than I would have thought, actually, but we're close. <laughs> the worst leg will be crossing the Indian Ocean. The monsoon has kicked in already, so we'll be right in the thicker monsoon season we go through there, and that'll really snot us. It'll be a, I reckon for these crew, it'll be the hardest three days of their life, I reckon. Seven more pit stops and 16,000 nautical miles left to go. Nearly two weeks after leaving San Diego, Earth Race approaches the island nation of Palau. This is going to be our first 
docking at night in the record attempt. We've had a really good run up till now of docking in daylight. Um, and the night one's always a little bit tricky, so I've got a little boat coming out to meet us and guide us in. The chance here are well off for Karoo. Last time we came here, they were half a mile out, so you need to get some local people to, to guide you in or you end up on a reef or something. And these are the coolest islands that I've ever been. <laughs> now, I don't say it because I'm here. It is the coolest bunch of islands I've ever been. And it's the islands and the people and it's the natural beauty you guys have got here. It's an amazing place. We are leaving Palau, shame to leave such an amazing place, but relatively good stop. I think three to four hours, not too bad. A pilot boat is ready to guide Earthrace out through the treacherous reefs. And then on its way out of port, Earth Race slams into something hidden beneath the water. Do you give us a pedal? Yeah, you f***ing heard it. I don't know. All right, we're going to have to come back in and at the very least change both propellers over. Uh, the P bracket is definitely damaged. You know, this could be race over. Like, you know, we can't fix the P bracket. We'd have to take it out of the water. Just to kind of look, see how it's peeled around and then broken. This one's gone bing straight away. This one, it's kind of bent before it's actually snapped off. And this one's just bent a little bit. Both propellers are damaged. The port prop is completely seized. Whatever it was we hit, log, reef, whatever, it's just pinged the one small area. So hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, we can carry on. We're about to find out if the drive shaft is really bent. And I've got my fingers crossed that it ain't bent, because if it is, we've got big problems. It's badly bent, worse than Pete thought. Oh, it's yeah. really stuffed. Really? Yeah, yeah. Pete's not ready to give up yet. So here's the deal, the shaft is definitely stuffed. Most definitely, like it's way out. Um, the P bracket looks pretty damaged and I don't know if we could go on with that or not. <laughs> to replace the shaft, if we were to pull it out, they, I don't believe they'd have the resource here to fix it. Um, Singapore probably would. So we, pull, we actually pull the drive shaft out here and there. Right. Uh, the boat leaves on starboard engine on its way to Singapore and then when we get to Singapore you have some tenders to help us in and hopefully a straight drive shaft yeah they'll lose a lot of time traveling to Singapore on just one propeller but it's either that or abandon the attempt to set a new record for racing around the world uh, it's really bad news and it's gonna cost us uh, a week in the end, maybe, at least. Find it? Sucks. One engine all the way to Singapore. Not a pleasant thought. There's only 39 more days to travel 10,000 nautical miles to the finish line in Spain. After two days running on one propeller, Earth Race limps into Singapore. Just tying off in Singapore and very relieved to be here in mostly one piece. They can replace the bent drive shaft and propeller bracket here, but it will cost them time and money. How's it been? We're broke. We're broke. We have to bend over backwards to the media types to raise cash. It's sad but true. I never thought I'd be in this position. <laughs> We arrived here with no contacts. Every single shipyard's full. We have 3,000 pounds left. We're looking at a $25,000 bill here. Well, she's done on the drive shaft, though. Should be, they say, ready tomorrow. We still don't have a shipyard. We thought we did, now we don't. 
the Earth Race team pulls through for Pete. A sponsor agrees to pay for the new drive shaft. And some fast talking by the ground crew earns Earth Race a berth, use of a crane, and a 24 hour repair shop. All for free. I've just secured some ropes. And we've also secured um, PPG coming to give us some more slippery paint. Just drop it a little bit. The repair is a massive effort, taking three full days. A small miracle indeed. So we have four stops to go, 7,000 miles, two weeks, let's rock and roll. With a new drive shaft to replace the one bent in a collision, Earth Race heads back out to sea. As they hit the Indian Ocean, the waves begin to grow. Earth Race is wading straight into the middle of monsoon season. Waves as high as 20 feet batter the boat for five straight days. It's physically and mentally exhausting for the crew. We're now in about our fifth day of monsoon, and it looks like tomorrow's gonna be the worst day of the whole voyage. It just kind of wears your crew down, and um, you can sort of see everyone's tired and grumpy and pissed off. And there's not really much you can do about the weather. Um, Bob McDavid's given us his forecast just half an hour ago. And it looks like tomorrow's gonna be the worst day of the whole voyage. Uh, and he's saying very strong winds, uh, big seas, much bigger than we've had today. I can't describe how hot it is in here. It's like a sauna. Your body is just engulfed in this sweat all the time. Uh, not so long ago, uh, about a week ago, just before Indian Ocean, we all ended up having prickly heat, and it's lasted until now. It's just this horrible needle pricking in your body every time you stretch the skin. Uh, we just couldn't get rid of it because we were just sticky and sweaty, and it's got into the beds and into the seats, and just everything smells. Oh, it's just repulsive. Happens when you when you're continuously pounding the boat like this is you get a little delamination and over successive impacts it gradually opens the boat up um, and so I'm really just trying to nurse the boat through this we could go a lot faster than we are but it would load the boat more in normal circumstances I wouldn't mind that but with us being so close to getting this record I'd hate to see us have it some kind of structural delamination or um, a crack appearing somewhere that opens us up and ends up um, causing us to have to stop and probably not get the record. But they're still making good time, still ahead of the record. From Singapore, it's 700 nautical miles to Sri Lanka then another 400 to India. Inside the boat, it's really humid, with all the hatches being closed up from the bad weather, and it's bad on your skin. So it uh, does you a lot of good to get outside for a little while. And uh, awesome to be back in some flat water again. must pass through the Suez Canal for the record to count. The ground crew arranges special permission, and Earth Race is the first boat ever allowed to transit the canal at a speed of 25 knots. 
they exit the canal into the Mediterranean at Port Said, Egypt. No more pit stops, just one sea left to cross. Earth Race is almost home. At the finish line, family, media, and sponsors are preparing a celebration for Earth Race's return to Spain. The ground crew isn't celebrating yet. Okay, tell me, what's their ETA past the line? Until they cross the line and the guys get off and get officially signed in, I'm still in, in the zone of, uh, you know, Earth Race mode. And Mark's wife, Jen, is counting down the minutes until he sets foot on land. Really, we've just been waiting, anticipating, and just hoping they'd really break this record because it's taken quite a lot of time and effort out of our lives as well. Although we've been looking forward to it, this is what we've been waiting for. So this is the day, this is the day, the coming back, you know. Days, 23 hours, 49 minutes. Earth Race smashes the record, cutting 14 days off the time. Feels amazing, amazing, mate. Coming here now, sort of the end of a long, long journey, and um, yeah, over the moon. Couldn't feel better. It's a very, very humbling to, to have people come along and give up a chunk of their life for you. Um, Adam, he's been on the boat for a full year. He hasn't been paid a cent. You know, a year of his life he's given up for this project. And he hasn't given it to me. He, he's given it to this idea of making a positive contribution. He believes in the message and, and thinks that, you know, he can contribute and he has. And it was an amazing effort by this team. And for me, coming here today, Singapore was where we delivered it. Take a boat around the globe in record time. It does give you, you know, it gives you a bigger set of balls that you, you think. I'm not, I'm not afraid to go put my, put my money on the line and, and put my talents on the line, most probably. Um, but I, in, in terms of what I'm going to do from here, I, I need to settle down. You know, I've done, I've done this gig. I need to get back home to New Zealand to my wife and kids and settle down again. I, I, I've spent too much time away from home. I owe so much money, I think I'm just going to have to sell the boat to, to bail out of my debts, most probably, and then I'll move on and do something else. Get that real job I keep thinking about. I, I've never really cared about the record itself, other than it allowed media to follow us, and, and through that you connect with people. And I, I think we have made a real valuable contribution, and if I walk away having lost all my money, but having you know, made that contribution, I'll settle for that, you know? But, I guess I've had, a, I've lived the dream for a couple of years. I've done something I really believed in, and and not many people get to do that in life like I have. So I've been pretty blessed and privileged to to get to do this project and and get the support along the way.